Okay, welcome back to the video. Today I'll be discussing camera gear, what I use for my hunting, camping, and kind of DIY videos I put together. I'll be explaining what I use, why I use it, and if I'd recommend it to you. So stay tuned as I kind of give you a rundown of the bits and pieces that I like to film with. Before we start the video, I have had a bit of a rummage through my camera gear and found some gear that I haven't used for a long time. So what I'm going to be doing is giving it away to someone that's looking to get into a little bit of YouTube or videography. It's a DSLR body, an action cam, and a few other bits and pieces that I'll find. And what I, all you need to do is be in Australia or New Zealand, put a comment below and say a little bit about yourself and what you plan to film with it. And yeah, I'll post it, you know, send it through to you uh, free of charge. So uh, give back to the community a little bit and hopefully see a young someone young, keen, uh, get into a video video a little bit of video content and videography so like I say comment below if you are interested in that little bit of kit okay let's go first piece of kit which most people often start out with is the GoPro that's what I started out with started with a Hero 3 had a Hero 7 I'm up to a Hero 9 now uh, super easy piece of kit, push the button, shoot, and you are good to go. So one issue, of course, with the GoPro is going to be the field of view. If you're wanting that close shot from distance, you're not going to be able to achieve that. However, it is super simple, and I always have it strapped to my head, and I also, with the Hero 9 and above, has a feature that is constantly recording in the background. You hit the top button, and it records the previous 30 seconds, I think it is. So it definitely helps to capture those moments that happen very quickly. Often with deer hunting, that is one of the things you do need. I don't run it all the time, otherwise it chews battery and it also you know, just chews through SD cards as well. The reason it does chew through SD cards, I am always shooting in 4K with the GoPro. All my videos that I release onto YouTube are only in 1080, but filming in the 4K gives me some a versatility with the crop factor so some of the footage I'm able to crop in to hopefully get a little bit more detail uh, especially when it's either lining up on a deer or you know some of those shots you just want to try and get a little bit closer filming in 10 uh, filming sorry in 4k does give you that option when you are in post processing and the video editing what I also always run I'm running one of their cages which has the external mic and improves the mic quality. And yeah, I'll, I seem to always run that. Other thing with GoPro, I always have plenty of batteries. I have this charger, three charges, charges three at once, and it is a, yeah, constantly have three charge, I constantly have three batteries charging on the go. So, but apart from that, that is a super easy, simple bit of kit to get yourself started, so. Grab a GoPro, grab a few batteries, and get into it. Okay, the next bit of kit that is always in my pack for one of my trips, well, mainly my hunting trips. I wouldn't wouldn't take this as much on a camping, fishing trip, but definitely hunting trip. This is one of my go-to cameras, and what I'm running is the Canon SX60 HS. The reason I love this camera is the zoom factor. So this camera has a optical zoom of 65 times. So what it is, is it allows you to zoom right into animals that are 500 to 1,000 meters away quite easily. Uh, what I do is I use this pretty much as my spotting scope. Video quality, photo quality is definitely not amazing, but it does the job. So any video that you see with me zoomed in on deer, the chances are it's gonna be this camera. Uh, overall, super rugged, I've had this in the pouring rain it's taken a beating still to go strong the battery life is okay uh, but yeah the photo quality or video quality especially at low lights often when you're seeing the when you are seeing the animals isn't the best uh, it does have a bit of autofocus issues with it but for how light and yeah for the power of that 65 optical zoom uh, yeah it's definitely always in my pack Okay, next piece of kit. So this is a, a camera I recently acquired. So as you can see, I carry a lot of camera gear and a lot of, I love trying out new bits and pieces. So 
What this is, is a 360 camera. It's the Insta360 uh, One X2. What it is, is has two lenses and is filming um, full 360. So what this allows you to do is get some of those very cool, unique um, selfie shots. What it does, it stitches out the selfie, the selfie stick and yeah, some of the footage you get from it, it is very cool. Super simple to video. All you gotta do, push the button, turn it on. However, one thing to take into consideration is it does take a fair bit of time with the post editing. Because you've got so much versatility with the 360 view, it does take quite a while to work out what you wanna do and how you're gonna edit it. So that's definitely one negative of the 360 camera. Another positive, super simple time-lapse videos. Very easy and they look you know, very good. So I've been using this a little bit on my last few trips and looking forward to testing it out a little bit more uh, moving forward. So that's the Insta360, cool piece of gear. Okay, let's move on to the drone. So some of my videos, you'll see the drone footage. Drones are great, they are temperamental. Uh, it's amazing the amount of times I've pulled up to a site, got the drone out and my apps either crashed, having issues with it, but when it works, some of the footage you can get is awesome. Uh, what I'm running is just the original DJI Mavic Pro, quite lightweight and I find these solid carry cases excellent. They live in there and then I can just throw them into my pack and I don't have to worry about it. Good thing about the drone, it gives you different perspective for your videos. It kind of adds a little bit of interest. You kind of get those areas or shots that you just can't see with the you know get with the normal camera and yeah, it definitely adds that different aspect uh, to your videos so wherever i can i try and get some drone footage when it's working and yeah but love the drone and some very cool shots okay a little bit of a change of angle i am filming on the gopro now but i need to show you my kind of go-to camera so i've probably been using this for about the last year and what it is, is the Canon M50 Mark II. Uh, what I like about it, it is lightweight. I have carried around DSLRs previously, and the weight of those and the size of those is cumbersome. So the M50 is a nice little small unit that still gives you great quality. Uh, at the moment, I'm just using the kit lens. So it's just the 15 to 45 mil kit lens that comes with the camera. And to be honest, if you frame the shot well, have the um, exposure and aperture set correctly, then you get some great shots with it. So I have looked at upgrading the lens, but at the moment it is doing everything I need. I am running just a little bit of a cage on the um, camera. It just helps um, give you a little bit more size, easier to hold, and yeah, I've just found that it was a little bit small, so just putting that cage on has helped kind of steady my shots. One thing I always run is an external mic. So whenever I'm filming, audio quality is king. So I'd highly recommend, if you haven't already, uh, what I am running here is just a cheap Boyer shotgun mic. And for the price, it's, yeah, I'll put a link below, but you know, they're well priced. It improves the audio quality and good audio improves a video so much. So that'd be definitely one of my uh, recommendations. So yeah, that shows you the Canon M50. What I might do now is just switch back to this camera to improve the quality and then I'll kind of run you through a few other things that I'd recommend for those that are getting into a little bit of videography or want to improve some of their videos. So those are the main types of cameras that I'm running. So the M50 is kind of my go-to camera. I've got the Super Zoom uh, Canon for those long shots and I'm always running the GoPro on my head to get those action shots when the unexpected happens. So those are the three ones, three main ones that I'm using and then also throwing a little bit of 360 footage in plus some drone footage in when I want. So probably five main cameras that I take away on a trip. So with the cameras comes all the charging gear, plenty of batteries, SD cards. So yeah, it quickly becomes a lot of gear, but I enjoy it. So it's what I enjoy doing and I'm more than happy to carry a bigger pack around to try and improve those videos and yeah, get the shots that, that I'm chasing. 
But what I think is more important is taking the time to frame the footage, having a tripod, getting those um, kind of different shots. Um, everyone can throw one on their head and just walk around, but I think when you start throwing in a few different angles, it really helps improve and kind of tells a story. So that's what I'm always trying, trying to do. I'm always looking at improving my videos, and that's one way by taking that time, framing those shots, and when you get it back and start editing it, that's when you're stoked that you took that time to get that shot. A couple other um, tips I would recommend to help improve those videos is first of all, with framing those shots, you definitely need a good tripod or a lightweight tripod. I run a silk tripod with a, oh, I can't remember the head I'm running, but I did recently upgrade the head to allow for mounting of a standardized tripod mount. So what I have is these mounted on all my cameras and then I can quickly, depending on which camera I'm using, use a one tripod, there's no changing mounts, they all fit on the camera. I'll run some footage to show you, but it makes life a lot easier when I can change between the M50, the Super Zoom Canon, um, or even the GoPro if I want, very easily. So running the same tripod mount makes life and getting those quick shots and framing those shots a hell of a lot easier. In addition to that, what I'm running on the M50 is a quick release that hooks up to my Bino harness. So what this allows me to do is have the M50 on my Bino harness at all times. It allows me to quickly get it off, get a shot as I'm hunting, walking, whatever I'm up to, um, plenty of getting, plenty of B-roll. Having it nice and handy makes me and forces me to take the shot. This also then can quickly adapt from coming off this onto the tripod if I need. So, okay, so what I'm using is I think it's called the Peak Design Quick Release. Uh, once again, not that cheap, but it is, it is excellent. So handy to be able to just whip the camera off and then hook it back into the bino harness when required. So it's definitely one little uh, piece of kit that I'm, I'm loving at the moment. The other thing I would recommend is a variable ND filter. So if you are new to videography, I would recommend YouTube in the 180 degree rule. Um, I think that's what it's called. Pretty much what it states is if you are shooting in 25 frames per second, you want to be capturing with a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. This allows the kind of smoothest, uh, most cinematic um, video and it definitely improves to give you kind of that more cinematic look, if that's what you're chasing, that's what I'm kind of in some of my videos looking for. And to achieve that shutter speed, especially in bright daylight where I'm often shooting, I require a variable ND filter to help ensure that my shutter speed can meet that 180 degree rule. So, and so what it does is it reduces the light coming into the camera to achieve the 180 degree rule. So yeah, very easy little simple piece of kit this goes on my kit lens, and just by twisting it, it's gonna change the light entering into my camera until I get that 1 50th of a second. So, like I say, if you don't know about that rule, definitely have a look on YouTube. It will help improve your videos. Okay, so I'll just quickly run you through what I use for post-processing. Big one, of course, though, is to capture as good a quality framed video as you can. However, once I get back to the office, what I do is download all my files into kind of a well-organized folder structure depending on what camera was used. I've also just recently got a MacBook Air, um, which I'm loving. I've recently changed from Windows to Apple and I'm loving it for the video editing. I am editing 1080 output, so and there's just no dramas there. I am using DaVinci Resolve, so DaVinci is a free editing software, so there's no excuse, you don't need Adobe Premiere, you don't need the latest and greatest. DaVinci Resolve is a super powerful free editing software. So jump on it, G give it a try. It is, relatively self it is relatively easy to use and I'm only using a fraction of what I can actually do. So I'm continuing to improve my skill set using DaVinci Resolve and, but yeah, overall a great editing software. So that pretty much summarizes and gives you kind of a quick rundown on what I use for my videos. I hope it was interesting for some. Um, if there is a question that you do have, make sure to drop it down below. Also, if you're keen to pick up my bits and pieces I've pulled out of my camera gear, please let me know below. 
a little bit a little bit about yourself and why and what you'd use it for. So very keen to give that away to someone you know kind of getting into it or keen to give it a crack. Once again, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please make sure to hit that like button. It really helps the channel. And if you want to see similar content, please hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you on the next video. Catch you later.